So my name is Ted Moreno. I'm the Director of Business Development Outbound Marketing for Microsemi. That's my day job. And then the other job that I have uh, is the Marketing Chair for Risk V Foundation. So um, I um, really am excited today to talk about the Unleashed Expansion Kit, which Yinsup gave you a little bit of a preview on. So um, let me just go through really quick the agenda that I'll be walking through. So I'm just going to take a minute of my own presentation to talk about the uh, marketing organization and uh, a call to action really quick. And then I'm just going to go through an overview of what we see for operating systems in the market embedded. Um, talk about the MicroSemi ecosystem called the My5 ecosystem, which was something we launched about six months ago now. And then an overview uh, and most of the presentation on the Unleashed kit, what the features are, and uh, we'll also give you a little bit more detail on the machine learning artificial intelligence core as well. So. Um, so just a really, really quick, uh, last year our focus and this year moving forward, it's all about awareness. We're really looking to drive awareness. We want the masses to know about Risk Five, So everybody here understands what, what it's about. Uh, a lot of believers here. Uh, and if, you, if this is the first time you've been to a conference, welcome. Uh, I know a lot of you have been to past ones. So um, we have a lot of metrics we track. So we know that uh, things are at least from a, a metric and a goal point of view are moving in the right direction. But um, two things that we really want to do to take it to the next level is um, some member companies are not quite ready to go public. You know, you're, you're either developing software tools, chips, what have you, and you may not be ready to go out. But your organization should be able to speak in a philosophical manner, like why risk five for me? What are the things about it that are interesting? So we have a lot of opportunity to promote the technology, and so I definitely, it's a call to action, similar to what Rob Oshana had talked about at NXP, so I really want to ask you guys, um, for your organizations to, to come forward, please see me, because we have opportunities where you don't need to reveal everything, but just talk at a, a higher level. Um, and then um, also we want to do, talk about, uh, and we're working in the marketing group to figure out how to get a porting paper done. Some kind of paper talks about porting to Risk V. So if you have experience in doing that, uh, really interested to, to work together. I want to get several member companies to put something together. Okay, so that's the end of my marketing thing. Now I'm shifting gears to the microsemi uh, side of the house. So when we look at the market, this is just one uh, data point from VDC research, but there's a lot of other surveys. Roughly 70% of the market is Linux, but 30% is real time. Uh, again, the numbers may be different for whatever uh, uh, market or business you're in. Uh, point is, you need both. And um, so Microsemi initially addressed the real-time operating system. So uh, the, the key here was our My5 ecosystem con consisted of a lot of tools. We had soft CPUs that we put into FPGAs. We had a, our own design tools. I have a slide on that in a second. Uh, we're working with RTOS vendors. We'll show you the ones that we have. Uh, uh, someone, went, I think Palmer had mentioned earlier in the morning, uh, some things that we had done, and we have uh, solutions and, and so on. Um, if you take a look, a number of RTOS vendors, we've either ported ourselves, uh, like Free RTOS and Minute, for example, and then we worked with some commercial organizations, so ExpressLogic had ThreadX uh, that, that was announced at Embedded World Conference just a couple months ago, um, and Micrium uh, again. So these are um, some RTOSs that are available. And um, in terms of uh, our toss that we have as well is uh, we have an FPGA board or my five board where we actually pre-program it with a 32-bit micro. So um, our tool chain is called Soft Console, and this is a complete IDE, Eclipse-based, so it allows you to do compiling, debugging, everything. So what's nice is you can, if you're not an FPGA person, you just want to do some uh, software coding, you can get this board, and with the software you can, um, you know, do compiling and, and run your designs. We do have a GitHub site that I've listed there that has a bunch of solutions and a lot of other uh, tools. Okay, so um, the focus of the presentation is the Unleashed Expansion Kit, and that's really what I want to, to focus on and, and talk about here. Um, so 
you know, Sci Five, uh, Yunsup had said, you know, we, we talked about collaborating and we really recognized the fact that um, the, the U540, the, the, the complex, the processor complex, was a great start, but the uh, chip link offered a memory mapped interface that we could all take advantage of to have a lot of custom peripherals and accelerators. So, um, you know, we wanted to step up and again, further allow the community to expand, right? And that's really the key is that you can now do a lot more porting with this kit. <clears throat> so just to get into a few details on the kit itself. So it's actually, it's a very complex board. Um, starting on the left-hand side, you see that FMC connector. And uh, that's actually how it connects to the Sci-5, Hi-5 board. Uh, micro micro semi polar fire FPGA in the middle. That's a 300,000 logic element device, so it's a very large FPGA. You can put a lot of functionality into that. And then you can see that's connected to a PCIe switch um, with a number of uh, PCIe connectors of different kinds. And then there's a number of other peripherals on here from HDMI, USB, um, SD card, and, and so on. So um, a lot of capabilities here. Uh, we actually pre-programmed the board with a chip link interface um, as well as a PCIe root complex. So that's already uh, set up for you and out of the box. You can just, again, write software. So um, this is actually an image of the board itself. So um, you, know, you can see the, I'll, I'll actually have a, a different slide that'll sort of show you this is the by 16 uh, by one slot and where this storage drive would go as well. Uh, the FMC connectors on the left-hand side there. So this is obviously a standalone board. You could potentially use this, but uh, obviously it's meant to use with the Sci-5 board. So again, um, just kind of in a block diagram fashion here, on the right-hand side is the Sci-5 uh, U540, uh, the Hi-5 Unleashed. Um, so there you can see the FMC connector. So again, uh, we talk about the chip link interface. So that's the memory mapped interface that would connect in to the micro semi polar fire um, expansion kit. So um, this is again a, a pictorial representation, the block diagram for how the two kits would be uh, utilized together. Um, so this is actually a photo shot that you would see on Crowd Supply. That's actually where we're selling it. I'll have a link in a minute uh, towards the end of the presentation. But again, the um, High Five Unleashed, and there's the expansion kit. So gives you an idea of um, all of the functionality. Um, just to talk a little bit about the peripherals, so um, just so you can see where and what gets connected. So in the block diagram I showed you uh, earlier, but uh, in terms of real form factor. So the PCI Express, we actually have a few different slots. So there's a by 16 connector. And when we run the demo later on, you'll be able to see we have a, a graphics card that's plugged into there. Um, there's a by one connector, PCIe as well on the board. Uh, there's also a connector for a drive, and that actually would be on the back side of the board. Um, and then again, you can see some of the other slower speed peripherals, uh, HDMI as well, and um, UARTs, so uh, with USB. So again, a lot of functionality on this board to uh, really leverage and uh, allow a significant amount of development, flexibility, and capability beyond the standard board. So um, what can you do? Well, one of the things that, uh, you know, it's kind of amazing because uh, we got the boards together about a week ago, and uh, the first thing we got up and running was Doom, which is uh, one of the demos that we'll actually be showing. But um, really, in the last 24 hours, um, we actually had an IP company that a couple of their representatives are here, ASIC Design Services, and um, they have a neural network, a, a deep learning IP. Uh, basically, this uh, uh, breaks up an image into a number of building blocks. It's a convolutional neural network. And then based on you know, what they see there, they, they break it down into these different probabilities that you see in the middle of the chart there. Um, and then uh, the algorithm would then detect, you know, pick the uh, most likely candidate for what the object is. So you know, this IP has been running on our FPGA, but the previous demo, 
um, actually had um, communicated through Ethernet to a standard PC, and the standard PC was previously running the demo. So, um, you know, we all got together, and Yunsup comes up with crazy ideas, and Ted Spears, who works at Microsemi, they're like, hey, let's get this demo running on the uh, Freedom Unleashed kit and the expansion kit. So um, we removed the PC part, removed the Ethernet link, and this is all like in the last, you know, 12 to 24 hours, right? They take all that stuff out, and uh, I'm just the spokesperson, right? I don't do the work. They did all this, and they were able to, using a lot of open source, tools, Debian, Linux, and I actually list a few of them in a minute, um, we're able to get this demo running um, and, you know, utilize the, um, the Hi5, uh, RIS5 cores to, uh, to draw the boxes to do all of the, uh, the things previously that the PC was doing. So um, this is the actual, uh, this is a, an example demo of, you know, what you could detect. So let's see if this video works here. I'll just, we'll just see if we can play this short video. Um, yeah, so as it's running, you know, uh, this is an actual demo that we'll be showing outside. So at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll have the setup back in the conference room or back in the main hall here. So um, anyway, it's uh, object detection. So uh, with any neural network, you can train it to do what you need it to do. So it doesn't have to just detect people or objects or animals or whatever. Um, it's uh, completely trainable. So definitely encourage you guys to check this out. Um, and I think one of the things that I like to talk about, and um, uh, it's a slide that we created, but it's very interesting in that, you know, we talk to a lot of customers and they're, they're looking at RISC-V, but they obviously are, are, you know, a lot of customers in the embedded space are using ARM. And so what's interesting is, um, you know, the ARM architecture is, all, is quite fragmented, uh, just like, you know, a lot of people talk about with RISC-V cores. You know, they're not all the same, right? You're not going to have the memory map being the same. Well, the fact that the ARM uh, ecosystem doesn't have the same memory map type of configuration meant that, you know, Linux had to do more and more to allow, you know, for that type of fragmentation. And Linux has become stronger, and in a way, it's actually helped RISC-V adoption. So, um, you know, whether someone has a design today that's in ARM, if they need it ported, they have to do work to go to another arm. So, you know, why not port it to RISC-V? So this, again, just kind of echoes back to my earlier comment and request. Um, if you have experience writing white paper about porting, uh, I definitely want to um, please see me after. We're really eager to put this together and try to uh, uh, make it very clear what's required and uh, what, are the, what are the key points to look out for. Um, so just to, uh, to sort of round out here, so there's a number of resources. If you're interested in the board, like Yunsup said, um, you, know, you can go to Crowd Supply. I'll have the link on the next slide. But there's a number of documents, documents both on our site and Sci5. There's a support forum. Um, and then uh, there's a link for the Unleashed SDK. Um, so it's uh, on Crowd Supply. Uh, the books are open now. We expect to be shipping in a couple of weeks. Um, and, and it's uh, $19.99 um, for the MSRP for, on crowd supply. And um, so let me just sort of summarize here. So, you know, basically the Unleashed Expansion Kit really allows a lot more software development to take place, uh, more specifically RISC-V Linux software development. Um, so we're really excited to continue to support the community. Uh, everything that we do, you know, is also helping Microsemi. So, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, I would definitely encourage you guys to uh, come and see the demo. Um, just to give you an idea, these are some of the tools that were used. So the Debian Linux, X Server, OpenCV, V4L, um, you know, and more. These are all tools that were used to run on the RISC-V cores. And so that's it. Thank you. I have a, I have a my five board, uh, not a general purpose one, but microcontroller class. And uh, it's a, a really nice bo board I did to play with. But I noticed that you have you provided um, Eclipse-based uh, tool for debugging for this board. 
mm -hmm. and uh, the problem is that I can't run it on my uh, FreeBSD operating system because you pro you distribute it in the closed source. And my question is, do you plan to provide the debugging tool in open source format? Uh, so the question is, is whether we provide the debugging tool in open source? Um, so the the my five soft cores that we have today, um, you know, we put on GitHub. So those are those are open sourced. Are you asking about the actual debug logic that's integrated into the core? Yeah. Um, so I don't exactly know the answer to your question, but we have several guys that are here that will be able to answer it. So uh, we'll follow up with you after and get it taken care of.